Welcome to this session. My last session talked about my worry about the shoulder, my fear that it would dislocate. There was basically no cartilage there, and I explained it. Some previous sessions have discussed my wife's glaucoma and her recovery, which in fact is too good to be true. I'd like to talk a little bit about that today because something else has happened that perhaps you think is too good to be true. Let me tell you a little bit about this shoulder right now. This is two days after the previous video. These are movements I would have never done two days ago. The body is doing them without problems. That joint's okay. I went out, played tennis yesterday afternoon, and was getting a precision I've never had before in my strokes. It's apparent that having a loose shoulder really messes up your ability to direct the ball. Tighten it up, boy, it's going where I want now. How's that possible? You don't change that kind of cartilage in two days. How do you do it? Perhaps I'm not a finished, finished product, a thing. Perhaps I'm a quantum structure. This is quantum healing, perhaps? Let me explain. This may very well be relevant to you. You could do this. Let's start here. These are lectures. If you've ever lectured to a group of physics students, you've done this one. Let's suppose we have a source of electrons here, a hot filament perhaps in a, in a vacuum. The, va the electrons are all coming out in all directions. Here there is a barrier with two holes for the electrons to pass through. The electrons come and hit this ball where there's a detector, and the red places show where the electrons show up. In particular, notice that there are areas where the electrons never show up because the electrons coming through, say, this hole might travel a little further than the ones coming through here. And if they are waves, they interfere. So a high wave interferes with a low one and they cancel. Yes, I heard you. You're saying, but an electron isn't a wave. It's a particle. Well. This is the way it works, folks. If we do the experiment, this is what we see. That's what's interesting about it, and puzzling, too. Because, in fact, we can reduce the current so that electrons flow very slowly, maybe one every 10 minutes, so that an electron comes out of here, and somewhere in this pattern we get a bing! It's detected. How did that electron interfere as a wave with anything else? And yet it does. People have done this very slowly. The interference pattern shows up perfectly, even if it takes six weeks. Richard Feynman created a, an idea of how to understand this. This this goes way back to the beginning of quantum mechanics in the 40s when they were tearing their hair out how to, how to explain this because what you're looking at is really nothing more than a very simple vacuum tube which is of course the things they were using and doing lots of experiments with even during the Second World War. His idea is that what you really know about that electron is it started from here and it ended up, say, there. You, that's all you know. You don't know where it went in between. You figure it had to go through one of these two holes. But, and he said that we can calculate where it will end up by assuming the electron is actually passing through all possibilities in order to get there. And the electron adds up all of these possibilities and produces a result which is consistent with the idea that there's a wave there. 
Now if we cover this hole, this is really only a single hole and we end up with a pattern that looks like this. Notice that this pattern is different. These stripes are broader. If I covered this hole, I would get this pattern. What does that have to do with me? Let's start by covering one hole. This is the only possibility now. This is me in which my body is unable to take responsibility for the maintenance of that cartilage. Now I look at a symbol, which of course I did, and the body says, all right, now I can take responsibility for your shoulder and some other places too. That opens up another hole and produces a different interference pattern. My body can now go back and ask, what about my history? Well now, if I look at the possibilities when, I'm t when my body is taking responsibility for that shoulder, the entire history says, well, I mean, I've been taking care of the shoulder for 30 years. Of course it's okay. Well, <laughs> uh, my muscles are a bit confused and so are my tendons. <laughs> but I'm being real gentle with them and they're not yelling too hard. I will tell you, it's, it's, it's been wonderful in two days to change my body in a way like that. Could you do this? Here's the critical question. Is the problem on record? In other words, did you see which hole the, mo the electron passed through? Is there a photograph of it? Did a doctor see it during an operation? Is there a past history of it that is in a picture somewhere? If that's true, you're stuck. You know it's there, you've got to live with it. However, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just you can't quite figure out what it is, you're not sure, you think that's what it is. In that case, there's an option. Help your body regain control of this and then give it permission to use its history. And then all of a sudden, the problem's gone. Wouldn't that be useful? It seems to be exactly what my wife has done with her glaucoma. If you came to me now and said, well, that could never have happened, you know, since her body took responsibility for it, you're right.